Yes, I'm going to tell some funny Army stories. It'll be great. Oh, hey, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. We're here this evening. I have an exclusive interview that I'm going to bring up here in a second. Before we get into that, we're actually, I'm just going to tell some stories from the Army. Just real relaxed video tonight. Something a little more entertaining. Monday, I'll get more serious again about some stuff that's going on in a video that I, an interview that I listened to when it came to communism. But with that, please like, subscribe, as it says on the top, like, subscribe, share with your friends, hit the notification bell so that you know what's going to happen. Now, without further ado, here's the exclusive interview I told you about that I now know. I know beyond a shadow of reasonable doubt who runs this world. And here's your proof. And I was part of transporting reptilians to the earth to control humans. So, Commander Zerk, thanks for talking to me about this, but how do we know you're really telling the truth? Do I look like I was born in Cleveland? Come on now. Okay, you have a valid point, but I've seen some pretty weird people from Ohio. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I couldn't help it. I just want to have a little bit of fun with you, but you heard what Commander Zerk had to say. He was part of bringing the Anunnaki here, which led to the place we're in now, which led to the British royal family, which led to the families that control everything, the Rockefeller, Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, the Bush family, the Clint. No, I'm kidding. All right. So let's get into what we're going to talk about anyway. So I served 23 years in the military. I'm very proud of my service. I thoroughly enjoyed my time in the Army. There's a lot of st information going on. There's a lot of fights on social media because now they've approved Female soldiers can wear ponytails, which my post on social media was at one point I was extremely impressed with what females can do with their hair because they put them up in buns and it was it would stay that way all day. And some of them I got to know as friends would tell me about how they get headaches from it. And the way I look at it is now they can put it in a ponytail and they can focus their time on other stuff that's actually more important. They don't have to worry as much about that, which I think is a great thing. As far as the comments about, well, what happens when it comes to hand-to-hand -hand combat? Uh, most of these, I would say, are either not military or, if they are, haven't spent much time in combat zones because you can count up the number of times it's come to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat in the last 20 years of war. It, it's a pretty short list. But my time in the Army was pretty good. I mean, I spent a lot of time in horrible places. I, I did. But even in some of those horrible places like Afghanistan, I was able to go places that Alexander tried on. I was able to go to Babylon and the ziggurat in Iraq. I, I've seen some great things, even while in not so great places. In, in fact, in Afghanistan, we were opening up the highway between Kandahar and Kabul. I was served as a liaison to the Romanian army battalion that was doing it. And we actually went through villages that didn't even know they hadn't seen Caucasians come through there since the Russians occupied Afghanistan and talking to them was kind of cool because then you got to give them a whole new impression of what we were there for, what we were trying to do. And that was a great thing. Along with that, I got to see a lot of Europe. I got to serve in Korea and I'm going to break those two down separately because they're, they are very different, but I spent quite a bit of time in Germany, which I enjoyed, picked up the language it, it's a great, beautiful country. It, it truly is. And I have a great affection for a lot of German food, Spätzle. It, you know what? If you want to invite me over and you're making Spätzle, then I'm there. I like German beer, as most people do, or bikeling. But I got to get away from the normal military things that you would go to. If you're, if you're a veteran that served in Bavaria, in Hohenfels, Grafenbeer, in that area, or you were actually stationed in Nuremberg, then you know all about the Green Goose, Maryland's. And I can't remember the name of the Irish pub that was there, but there was a lot of good time spent there. And just being out in the countryside or living in Regensburg, which is a town outside of Hohenfels, which is the, what is it? Joint Multinational Readiness Training Center now. When I was there, it was called something. It was CMTC when I was there, but now it's JMRC because more countries use it before their deployments to Afghanistan or Iraq or peacekeeping in Bosnia and Kosovo. 
And, and it just really was a great place to be. And I got to see a lot of great things. And Korea, there, there's a lot of funny stories that people talk about Korea. There were alcohol this and alcohol that. And I could go into a couple of those because I, I will admit I did have my times with those. But I was in a unit in Korea, which we had more Katushas, which is Korean augmentees, the United States Army. They're actually Korean soldiers that when they time comes for them to do their conscription, they score high enough on test in English and aptitude that they serve with American units to help augmentee. So America has to send less soldiers there. And, and it's a pretty good program. And the fact that we had so many Katusas for me was great because I got to spend time with them. I got to go out chew sock, which some people compare to Thanksgiving in the United States. I went up to a Buddhist monastery with them and ate fried grasshoppers and fried crickets and, but it was a good experience. And I got to go out and really enjoy. I really developed a love for Korean food while I was there, which is held to this day. I discovered soju can be bad. But I had overall, I had a really good time. And I got an appreciation of the culture. And you go to Seoul, you go to Gyeongbuk Palace, and it's beautiful. Now, the irony of that is when you read the signs, it's you, you see the history of Korea because basically a bunch of the buildings at Gyeongbuk Palace have plaques on them. And it's built this day, destroyed this day by the Japanese, built, rebuilt this day, destroyed this day by the Japanese, on and on and on. And it's it, it's an interesting concept to think about that in one way or another, they, they're really at a mixing pot where they've been caught. Korea, the Korean Peninsula as a whole, has been caught between the tides of China and Japan for their entire history. And now you have North and South Korea, so it's a whole different environment that they're dealing with. But overall, my time in the Army was great. I, I know there's questions about toxic leadership at certain Army posts in particular. What I will say is in 23 years, there's a couple of people that stand out as really horrible leaders that I had. One was a staff sergeant when I was, I had been in the Army for maybe two years at that point. The other was a company commander I had who I'd been in the army. I had been in the army much longer at that point, but so I can count on one hand, the number of bad leaders I was around that were toxic. On the other hand, I could not count and I could not even be begin to rack and stack the great leaders, men and women who I was lucky enough to have served with and to have worked for while I was in the military or when I was at the NCO Academy and I was in charge of the senior leaders course, how many great leaders I had come through my course, many of which are still in the military. And now one just got promoted to chief warrant officer three. And I saw that on social media and that was pretty cool because he was a great student. I saw him in action as a drill sergeant. He was a great drill sergeant. And now as a warrant officer, he's setting an example for a whole new generation of soldiers that are coming up, NCOs and warrants. And that's a great thing. I know several officers who are currently in senior positions, one of which I'll go ahead and do the shout out is Colonel Patrick Roddy, who's got the old guard who uh, on social media, I see the stuff that the third infantry regiment is doing in Arlington and their ceremonies. And I, I'm just going to say, great. It, it is awesome to see that because they truly set an example that the entire United States gets to see what the army really stands for. So when we talk about the negative parts about the military, it's balancing. They do have toxic leaders, but the majority of them are good. And, and the majority of them, like many of the senior commissioned officers I've served with, and almost every single one of the senior non-commissioned officers who's still in, they chose a path of selfless service. They chose to serve something more than themselves. These men and women could have gone, well, many of them do have advanced degrees at this point, but they could have been CEOs, CFOs, COOs of Fortune 500 companies. But instead, they chose to serve the nation. They chose to serve something bigger than self. And I know I started this video off with kind of the, the goofy video with about reptilians. And, you know, we're going to go into that. And I think I'm going to start a TikTok channel where I just do these shorts. And maybe I'll do it on YouTube with shorts, too, where I'll just do some of the funny stuff. But I, I just want to say, when, when you're looking at these headlines about the military, you've never served. Do some more research or talk to somebody that's actually been in for a length of time. And I'm not talking about your cousin who got kicked out for being overweight or failing their PT test. 
because that's probably not the one to give you a good answer. But 99% of the leaders in the military are great men and women who have a desire to serve their country and they feel privileged to lead America's sons and daughters. Don't ever lose sight of that part, that part. Because I did, it, it was an honor. Every day I served my country, it was an honor to lead America's sons and daughters, be it in garrison, in a school environment, or in combat. And I would just like to, everybody, you know, I wear some of my old Army t-shirts or sweatshirts when I'm going to the gym or just running around. A lot of reasons because I'm pretty cheap when it comes to clothes, but people will say thank you for your service. And to me, it's, it's always been very awkward because it goes back to what Matt, Matt Best titled his book, Thank You for My Service. Because I was given the honor to lead America's sons and daughters, and I loved every day of it. I don't feel I made sacrifices to be in that position. My family did, but I was doing a job I loved. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoy this. Everybody have a great evening. Please like, subscribe, share with your friends. If you don't like what I'm doing, they go ahead and subscribe and hate watch anyway, because that still helps the algorithm. If you have ideas about what you want to see, please DM me on Twitter or Instagram. Upcoming Wednesday, we're going to do part two where Epen and I talk about criminal justice reform. And Monday, I'm going to do kind of current events and also the interview where they kind of talk about the fall of the Soviet Union and some of the effects that trying to understand why Marxism is still so popular now. With that, everybody have a good evening.